Hello everybody, Miss Peachy again from your WCA biology class and today we are going to be doing the lesson on um, unit 3 lesson 4 structure of the cells. We're going to be looking at just some of the structures of the cell today specifically those that are found in the endomembrane system which is what we have up on the screen. Just as a reminder to you that um, on my website there is a follow along guide here to go through kind of an outline of what we're going to be talking about in our lesson today. This is a pretty short one. Um, a lot of it is actually review from some previous lessons that we did so that's kind of nice as well. So um, last lesson we looked at part of the structure of the cell. We were looking at the cytoplasm and um, for this lesson we're going to be looking at some other structures of the cell. And so uh, as you look in your notes or the note sheet that I provided it first talks about what an organelle is, and we've, I've used that term with you before. Organelle actually literally translates into little organ. So if you can kind of think about um, the organs in your body and kind of what they do, right? So you are made up of organs and organ systems that work together to perform certain functions in your body. Well, in your cell, there are these structures that perform specific functions as well, and those are called organelles. They're structures that perform specific functions in the cell. Um, these organelles are divided up into two groups. We have membrane bound organelles and our non membrane bound organelles. So our non membrane bound organelles are um, things like cell walls and um, ribosomes and things like that. And some of our membrane bound organ organelles, man, that's tough to say, are things like the nucleus and the mitochondria and they have their own specific membrane. You know how the whole cell has a membrane that kind of protects it and regulates what can go in and out of it? Well, the nucleus has a membrane that regulates what goes in and out of the nucleus and the mitochondria has a mitochondrial membrane that's going to regulate what comes in and out of it as well. So um, some of our cells will have membranes that kind of regulate transporting stuff in and out of them too. So the first um, organelle we're going to talk about is the nucleus. We've actually talked about this one before, maybe not um, specifically as an organelle, but we've definitely talked about what it does before. So remember our nucleus, this is what we call the control center for the cell. So the DNA is housed here, and within the nucleus, um, protein synthesis will begin. So transcription, which is a part of the process of protein synthesis, is done inside of the nucleus. Remember, we talked about that before. That is where the DNA is unzipped and um, the uh, RNA polymerase enzyme actually takes little free-floating nitrogenous bases and will attach them to form a structure called messenger RNA and the messenger RNA is then revised and um, spliced and put back together and the exons and the introns we talked about that in like a couple lessons ago and then, then it moves out of the nucleus and finds a ribosome so that brings us to our next organelle which is the ribosome So the ribosome is found in the cytoplasm and on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Okay. So remember, um, I don't know if I should say remember here, but sometimes we call the rough endoplasmic reticulum just the rough ER. <laughs> So we don't have to say endoplasmic reticulum, although it does force us to kind of slow down our pace of speech, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, and then remember on, on the ribosome is actually where we see the process of translation occurring, right? And the proteins that amino acids are being assembled to make a protein. Okay, that's what's happening on our ribosome. And then from there, <clears throat> we can look at um, some of our other. Um, let's see here, I want this to come up here. 
we can actually look at some of our other organelles. So this is actually the slide that we are on because then it gives you this kind of chart here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of move this over and bring that back. There we go. So we have a split screen here and kind of move this around as well and zoom out so we can see a little bit better. Okay, <clears throat> so we did our, um, our ribosome and our nucleus here. And then we have these organelles that make up the rest of the endomembrane system. The rough endoplasmic reticulum, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, and the vesicles. So I'm not going to really type anything up for these because they're written right here in the um, lesson for you. But the rough endoplasmic reticulum, as it says here, has ribosomes on its surface. And this is where uh, translation has taken place, where the um, amino acids are assembled into a protein. Then we have our smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and it just, it lacks the ribosomes. It's, so it's smooth, has smooth appearance to it. Instead of uh, doing prior, uh, protein synthesis, it actually makes lipids and steroids. So these are used in the production of membranes and hormones. Um, it also functions in deoxification of waste materials. So it detoxes the waste materials so they're not poisonous when they're exported out of the cell. And it is used in the production of uh, uh, membranes and, or production of steroids and lipids. So then we have our Golgi apparatus. And our Golgi apparatus is also sometimes known as the Golgi body. And the Golgi apparatus, um, this is where, like, once the protein is made on the ribosome, it moves to the Golgi apparatus where it is kind of completed. At this point, any additional um, sugars or lipids that need to be attached to the protein to kind of make it completely functional are done so. And then it is packaged up nicely and transported to where it needs to go. Sometimes that is inside of the cell, someplace else, and sometimes it is outside of the cell. It has to be out, uh, packaged into these things called vesicles. So we talked about vesicles in our, our last video as well. Packaged into these vesicles for either um, exocytosis or it's just moved around somewhere inside the cell. And that's neither exo or endocytosis. It's just kind of moving it. So... <clears throat> Let's just kind of finish up here with looking at um, how the whole process of protein synthesis is going to kind of finalize here. So let me just let's do kind of a review. <clears throat> so in the nucleus, transcription, <clears throat> excuse me, um, unzips the DNA and I'll say um, our RNA polymerase assembles mRNA. Then the mRNA, I know we, we have to, it has to be, um, has to go through revision and stuff like that, but we don't really need to know that part. So it's going to move out of the nucleus to a ribosome that can be free in the cytoplasm or attached to the rough ER. Here, translation occurs. Here, we can type. Where amino acids are assembled to make a, it's actually, we call it a polypeptide chain. Um, because it needs to be folded and needs to be modified and stuff in order to be a fully a protein, but we'll just say a protein. The protein then goes to the Golgi. Golgi. To be modified and packaged into a vesicle to be transformed ported in the cell or out of the cell using exocytosis, which again we talked about in our last video as well. 
And so that's pretty much it. That is the content for this lesson. Like I said, it was a fairly short lesson. So hopefully that has helped you. That has made some sense. And um, again, if you have any questions, always feel free to contact me. But that's it for this one, ladies and gents. I will see you in the next.